Welcome fellow travelers. Welcome to all who have journeyed this path for a while. Welcome to those who are new to the path. Welcome to those who are not sure where the path lies. Welcome to new visitors and to old friends. Welcome to the young at heart, to those of all ages and colors, all orientations and gender expressions, all abilities and cultures and opinions. Know that you are welcome here, no matter what, for this is God's house and all may enter here. Welcome to everyone. We hope that you find peace and uplift in our worship. Now the boy Samuel was serving the Lord under Eli. The Lord's word was rare at that time, and visions weren't widely known. One day, Eli, whose eyes had grown so weak he was unable to see, was lying down in his room. God's lamp hadn't gone out yet, and Samuel was lying down in the Lord's temple, where God's chest was. The Lord called to Samuel. Here I am, he said. Samuel hurried to Eli and said, I'm here. You called me. I didn't call you, Eli replied. Go lie down. So Samuel did. Again the Lord called Samuel. So Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, I'm here. You called me? I didn't call you, my son, Eli replied. Go and lie down. Now Samuel didn't yet know the Lord and the Lord's word hadn't yet been revealed to him. A third time, the Lord called to Samuel. He got up went to Eli and said, I'm here. You called me? Then Eli realized that it was the Lord that was calling the boy. So Eli said to Samuel, Go and lie down. If God calls you, say, Speak, Lord, your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down where he'd been. Then the Lord came and stood there, calling just as before, Samuel, Samuel. Samuel said, Speak, your servant is listening. The Lord said to Samuel, I'm about to do something in Israel that will make the ears of all who hear it tingle. On that day I will bring to pass against Eli everything I said about his household, every last bit of it. I told him that I would punish his family forever because of the wrongdoings he knew about, how his sons were cursing God, and because he wouldn't stop them. Because of that I swore about Eli's household and that his family's wrongdoings will never be reconciled by sacrifice or offering. Samuel lay there until morning, then opened the doors of the Lord's house. Samuel was afraid to tell Eli, but Eli called Samuel, saying, Samuel, my son, I'm here, said Samuel. What did God say to you, Eli asked. Don't hide anything from me. May God deal harshly with you, or worse still, if you hide from me a single word. So Samuel told him everything and hid nothing from him. He is the Lord, Eli said. He will do as God pleases.
the story of Samuel is the story of a transitional time, a time between what was and what will be in Israel's history. The nation, really a ragtag collection of people who share a common faith and identity, yearns for greatness. They want glory. They want a king. They want what is not yet. David, the beloved soldier king with his own human frailties, is yet to come. For now, they will have to settle for a prophet who cleans up corruption in the temple, only to fall into traps of his own later on. Just as we are in a time of waiting for what is to come, the ancient Israelites must wait and trust God and trust in the goodness of what is yet to be. Writing about the current stage of the pandemic, particularly the, the pandemic within churches, Susan Beaumont says, quote, we are in a liminal season. Something has ended, but a new thing is not yet ready to begin. In liminal seasons, systems and processes break down because they are supposed to. We cannot discover a new beginning until something ends or dies. Much of our overwhelm comes from trying to preserve or adapt things that are meant to fail. Our ancient forebears were in this kind of in-between time too. This is the context for today's Bible story. Leadership by the judges is ending, but the monarchy has not yet emerged. Now, as you may recall, that before he was born, you may recall that before he was born, Samuel's mother, Hannah, ached to have a child. She prayed to God and she, she promised that she would dedicate her child's life to God if only she could have a child of her own. That is how Samuel ended up in the shrine at Shiloh. From the time he was weaned, Samuel lived with the priest Eli, learning the ways of God. From our scripture reading, one day Eli, whose eyes had grown so weak he was unable to see, was lying down in his room. God's lamp hadn't gone out yet, and Samuel was lying down in the Lord's temple where God's chest was, the Ark of God. Notice that while the priest Eli, who's cared for Samuel since he was weaned, was sleeping in his own room, and yet the boy Samuel is sleeping inside the temple, beside the Ark of the Covenant. The writer of 1 Samuel tells us volumes in the choice of the physical location of the two humans in our reading today. Eli is estranged from God. Samuel is close to God. Though we learn in verse 7 that Samuel does not yet know the Lord, the setting of the story indicate that he's well on his way toward that end. I like to think of Samuel as having an intuitive, just beneath consciousness sense of God during this time. And as the story builds, we realize that God is calling Samuel to big things. After Samuel's called and shows up at Eli's bedside multiple times, Eli realizes what's going on from the text. Then Eli realized that it was the Lord who was calling the boy. So Eli said to Samuel, go and lie down. If he calls you, say, speak, Lord, your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down, lay down where he'd been. At this point in our scripture reading, we have a sweet little story about hearing God's call. So far, we've learned three things. First, we've learned that God is persistent in God's call to Samuel and by extension to us. Though I think God will negotiate with us to a point, to a point. If God has God's sights set on our doing something, divine persistence usually pays off. Yes, we do have free will, 
but God has a way of being quite persuasive. Second, we often do not recognize God calling us. Though I can't speak for Samuel or for you for that matter, for me, I often don't hear God speaking because I get distracted or if I'm totally honest, I don't like what God's saying. And so I pretend not to hear. Now there's nothing wrong in arguing with God a bit. Even Abraham did that. But things usually go far better for all concerned when we respond affirmatively to God's call. Third, we need outside eyes and the wisdom of others to help us recognize whether it is indeed God calling in the night. We need one another's help in discerning if what we are hearing is God or if it's our own ideas and our own desires. Too many heinous things have happened throughout history when people went off on their own without communal discernment and blessing and claimed they were doing God's will. But of course, the story doesn't stop at the end of the 10th verse with God speaking to, to, to Eli. We have one more, a fourth, more important and challenging thing to learn about heeding God's call in a liminal time, a time when the future is hard to see. The Lord said to Samuel, I am about to do something in Israel that will make the ears of all who hear it tingle. God is about to do something that makes the ears of the people tingle. I love the poetry of the language, but not so much what is about to come, not so much what, what Samuel is going to have to do. The prophecy that God gives Samuel will not be an easy one for him to share. God will require Samuel to tell someone he loves things that will be hard for that someone to hear. God provides each of us with the gifts and skills to respond with a resounding yes to God's call. But it often is not easy to do what God calls us to do. It's often hard to do what God calls us to do. It's hard to wait. It's hard to act. Doing what God calls us to do can be filled with loneliness or grief or sadness or loss of friends at times or even rejection. Like Jesus who cried out on the cross, cross, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When we strive to respond faithfully to God's call, it doesn't always go as we'd hoped it might. Sure, sure. Our sense of well-being and purpose will grow as our lives become more in tune with God's dreams and desires for us. The good news is that when we say yes to God, God's unfolding realm of love expands just a little bit more. But it can be challenging to get there. It can be hard to force ourselves to take that first step toward doing what we know we're called to do. Samuel's first prophetic message must be delivered to his mentor, Eli, the next morning. Samuel must tell Eli that because Eli had not stopped his sons from their evil ways, he will lose all that he has achieved in his long life. Though Samuel's spiritual gift is prophecy, even though God will let none of his words fall to the ground, it does not mean it will be easy for Samuel. He must confront the priest who has taught him all about God, the man who raised him for all practical purposes. As a community, as a church, we are being called to trust in the midst of these confusing times. We are called to trust that God is in the transformation of the church universal, and the transformation of this particular congregation, all while we can't really see what's coming. At this stage of the pandemic, 
19 months since we went into lockdown, we all desperately want some sense of normalcy. We are tired of social distancing, we are tired of masking, and we are fed up with limitations. <sighs> and so we turn our eyes and hearts backwards toward a past that is no more and will never come again. When God calls to Samuel, it is clear that the past is over. The transition to a new Israel is just beginning with Samuel. Nancy Robb helped me think about, about where we are as church and as, as a people at this stage of the pandemic through the use of a metaphor. She used the metaphor of a bridge. Imagine this bridge is enveloped in the mist and the fog. We cannot see whether the bridge is solid or not. We don't know how rickety it is. We cannot see what is on the other side. All we know for sure is that there are crocodiles in the water below and turning around is not an option. And so we choose to put one foot in front of the other and begin to cross the bridge. Pausing for a breath partway across, we look forward and all that we can see is fog and mist. Yearning for some certainty, we turn around and look backwards and we realize that the time that we thought, that time in the past when we thought we had some control, all we can see of it is a mist and a fog. All we can see is history that has disappeared. I cannot imagine that Samuel wanted or looked forward to telling his mentor, Eli, what was to come for him. I cannot, cannot imagine that he wanted to, to, to disappoint those he loved by telling them that the past was gone and would not return. But God has called Samuel and he responds with an enthusiastic, here I am, Hineni, in the original Hebrew, Hineni. In so doing, Samuel looks across the bridge and he can only see the fog and the mist. And yet, still, God calls him forward across that bridge. I imagine that Samuel felt disorientation. We all know what it's like to, to feel disoriented in a fog bank. But Samuel chooses to surrender to the disorientation in trust and in faith. In the words of Susan Beaumont, no amount of skill or hard work on our part will resolve the deep door disorientation of our church, our organization now. It will only left, leave us feeling exhausted. We surrender when we yield to that disorientation. We acknowledge that some conditions are beyond our control. No amount of problem solving will fix what is broken. Broken, breaking. No amount of problem solving will fix what is breaking. Some part of what is breaking now is meant to. So that something new might emerge. We must have death before we can have resurrection. And so our job is simply to heed God's call. God did not abandon our forebears Neither will God abandon us now. Take one step at a time in faith and hope and in confidence. We are Oregonians after all. We are built for the fog and for the mist. We are followers of Jesus after all. We are built for letting go and trusting God when it's hard. When God calls, shout Hineni, here I am. Follow Christ through the fog, assured that all will be well, and all will be well. Amen.